Hey everybody, I'm Taylor Moreland. I'm the owner of AgriSpray Drones. Thank you so much for joining us here today um, and learning about the sprayer drone industry. So this is really gonna be a really high level overview um, and for, for newcomers, for intermediates, uh, for people just you know, looking to learn more, uh, for those who already are in the industry, uh, we're gonna cover a, a wide range of, of topics and uh, let's get started. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna introduce sprayer drones first, say what they are. We'll look at regulations here in the US. When we'll talk about our company, what we do here at AgriSpray Drones and most of the rest of the presentation uh, will be um, about using sprayer drones on the farm and, and off the farm too. So what is a sprayer drone? Well, simply put, a sprayer drone is very similar to any other multi-rotor drone. Think Phantom, Mavic, if you use a camera drone before, that's, that's how a sprayer drone operates, same concept. But of course they have spray tanks and they utilize software to operate autonomously. Uh, they're battery powered, just like other drones. Um, there are some sprayer drones out there that are a single rotor and have uh, like a Honda, you know, like I think Yamaha actually uh, has one that's a single rotor engine, but we're talking about um, you know, battery powered drones here. And then all of ours also have a granular spreader attachment as well. So who makes sprayer drones? Where do they come from? DJI, um, that's who we, uh, or the drones that we have are DJI drones. We are looking at others right now as well, um, but DJI is really what we consider to be um, the leader, and especially the leader here in the U.S. Um, they're the largest drone manufacturer in the world. They have focused a lot of their efforts, you know, previous to sprayer drones, um, and even now, on all different platforms of drones, from small to medium size to different industries. Now, in they're they're in the ag, been in the ag industry since 2015. Highly engineered, uh, very innovative, um, and they are uh, working really closely with us. So there are other manufacturers. And if you can guess, you know, pretty much 99% of sprayer drones are manufactured um, in China. And this is for good reason. You know, this is because, you know, China has a, a very small farms typically and a lot of hand spraying. So if you go from hand spraying to drone spraying, huge increase in efficiency. And so that's kind of where they started, you know. And so now China kind of leads the market when it comes to uh, sprayer drone manufacturing. XAG is another company that we have tested. Um, and... Uh, they're actually the largest uh, in Asia right now, a uh, direct competitor with, with DJI, very, very similar technology. Um, and then Yamaha R-Max, a single rotor I talked about. There's also about a dozen plus other companies that make sprayer drones. Sizes range from 10 to 40 liters. Um, there are some large ones probably on, on, the, on the horizon, but none that actually have been approved for use in the U.S. right now uh, beyond that size range. Rapidly advancing technology, primarily on the software side. You know, that's really where... Um, we've seen the most advancement is on like the, the software and ease of operation um, has been on, on that side as far as advancing. And in the U.S., it's been fairly slow adoption uh, compared to the rest of the world. Uh, and that's largely due to regulations. So that's what we're going to look at right now. What do you need to legally operate a sprayer drone here in the U.S.? Now, we have uh, detailed guides um, on this. You can see that. The picture there below on the screen, we provide that guide to everybody who's interested. And then we also, that, that's just a starter guide, we also provide, um, a, we essentially walk you through the entire process. All of our customers will walk you through the entire process uh, when it comes to regulations. What do you need? 107, that's just your drone pilot's license. Any drone that you operate um, here in the U.S., small drone, large drone, whatever, you need a 107 to legally operate that. 60 question multiple choice test, we have a study guide. Um, it's pretty straightforward and you can get it done pretty quick. Um, there's two other things that aren't listed on here that the FAA needs, uh, and that is a, uh, well, at least for a heavy drone, you need your class two medical certificate. Uh, and that's very straightforward. Again, it's a, it's a physical, you need to register your drone. So you need an in number if it's a uh, large drone. And then on the state side, we'll talk about that first before we move on to the next one. Uh, you do need uh, your state applicators licensing. That's different from state to state. Uh, so we recommend you contact your state um, pesticide license or, or, um, plant, license or plant department um, and ask what, what you need to legally operate a sprayer drone in the state. And that's usually pretty straightforward as well. So now these last two here, the FAA Part 137 and the 44807, these right here 
are what's known as exemptions. They're both exemptions. Uh, one is your aerial applicator's exemption, and you know, they call it a license also. Uh, and the other one is your heavy drone exemptions. Every drone that weighs more than 55 pounds, which almost every drone that we sell does, uh, needs this exemption to operate legally. Um, these exemptions are a bit difficult to obtain on your own, which is why we have a regulations consultant who actually works with all of our customers and helps you through this entire process, actually does a lot of this process uh, for you uh, or on your behalf, and then helps you through the process that you need to do uh, yourself. So it can be done easily through the regulation consultant, but doesn't mean that it's going to be quick. You know, we're looking at really right now, you know, kind of about a nine to 12 month, probably. I don't know. I mean, things change on the FAA's part on a, on a, on a yearly basis, it seems like a monthly basis. So uh, it, it could be shorter, but we're saying nine to 12 months right now to get fully legal on your own. So how do you operate without you know, these? Well, you don't because that's illegal, but you can operate under uh, what's you know, known as kind of an umbrella program or as long as you have you know, somebody that has these exemptions and you operate um, as an applicator for them, then you can operate legally. Um, you know, the, the entity has to have these two exemptions right here. So we partnered with a program called Pharmatude. Pharmatude is a nonprofit program that actually helps kids get involved in agriculture through technology. And really, really cool program. They have all their drone licenses because of the whole technology aspect. And they, all their you know, high schoolers and, and college kids utilize these licenses to operate. And so we partnered with them to raise money. And how we're doing that is they've agreed to let uh, our customers operate um, through their um, through their licensing, through their exemption, become applicators for Pharmatude. And then you get to operate legally um, because you get to you know, operate under their 137 and you, the small fee that they charge for our customers goes all back into the charity, all back into getting more kids set up um, and getting more kids in ag. So really, really cool program. You can operate on that program until you get your own licensing. Let's take a look at AgriSpray Drones, our company, what do we do? and kind of our history. So in 2019, actually 2018, we began some testing on sprayer drones. Kind of the concept was born. And really, you know, the idea that I had at that time was, you know, we had some problems with some custom applicators, some aerial applicators more specifically, some aerial applicators in our area where they weren't showing up on, on time sometimes, or they had, didn't do, you know, some guys didn't have a good enough job they didn't think uh, done. And we had, you know, one really, really good guy in our area, one really good helicopter pilot in our area. And everybody wanted him because he's so good. But when everybody wants him, well, he can't do everybody. So you had to get somebody else to come in. And I mean, you get somebody else to come in from out of the area. Sometimes the job isn't done as well. So I thought, well, why don't, you know, how do we fix this problem? One of two ways. We get farmers the ability to do it themselves. So if you're a farmer, these drones, you can do aerial application yourself with a drone or we set up local service providers um, in the area. So when we look at like herbicide application, you know, you might have local retailers or you might even have individuals, you know, who farm a little bit, plus they do custom application, custom herbicide application with a ground rig, um, you know, John Deere sprayer, a boom sprayer. Those guys are great to work with because you know them personally. Well, what if you could know your aerial applicator personally with using a, you know, through using a drone and they operated just in that area? So that's kind of the concept here. So in 2020, we founded AgriSpray Drones, did a ton of testing uh, through 2020. 2021, we began sales there in January, and now, we, uh, 2022, uh, we are the largest um, sprayer drone distributor um, across the U.S. Um, and growth into uh, other countries now uh, as well. And we're, you know, how do we get this quick growth? It's because, you know, we're really focused on agriculture. That's where we started. We didn't start with the drones, we started with the problem in agriculture. We really understand that, that problem. We understand agriculture very, very well. So uh, why sprayer drones? The meat and potatoes of this presentation here. Why sprayer drones? Three aspects we're going to look at today, and that is as an on-farm aerial application tool. So the whole thing that you know, this business was started with, you know, providing better solutions to the problem of not enough aerial application supply. And then we're going to look at research. Um, so tremendous tool for research. These drones are uh, going to be a game changer when it comes to how uh, aerial application research or certain products are researched. And then we'll look at special use applications, something I'm really, really excited about. In the row crop industry, we don't need 
um, data necessarily to show how much better a drone is than a helicopter or an airplane. Um, you know, you can see it visually. Plus, even if it's the same, well, we know that it works. We know aerial application works if it's done right in row crop, so don't need data. But special use applications, there is a ton of uses for these drones. We need data, and we are collecting data right now to show that these drones are, can be used for a ton of things. So things like wetland work, forestry work, right away clearing, mountainous terrain. We painted greenhouses. We've done orchard work. Uh, we're doing vineyard work, specialty crop work. Um, you know, the lift, list goes on. And of course, heavy lift applications, including beer delivery. Well, that's what everybody's thinking right now. Can it lift a 30 pack? Well, unfortunately, Michael Jordan already beat you to it. He's actually a couple years ahead of you. Uh, this is uh, footage right here from one of his golf courses down in Florida where they actually use a drone, not a sprayer drone, but a large drone, uh, to deliver beer to their patrons on the course. So there you go. <laughs> uh, but what we're talking about here is this right here. This is one of our very early videos testing out the T-16 doing fungicide application on corn. And so this is what we're talking about um, when it comes to sprayer drones, what we're going to be using them for. It's actually at a research farm, uh, Bradford here in Missouri. That's where we do, we do a lot of work with, with Bradford Research Farm and now other universities as well. So let's look at row crop use. So when we talk about row crop, which is I'm sure what many of you on this, on this webinar you know, are in, the industry you're in, what are we talking about using sprayer drones for? So low volume application, you know, ultra low volume ULV application is sometimes what it's referred to. So a half gallon to three gallon an acre is very common. Yes, you can go as high as we've done uh, 50, I believe, 50 gallon to the acre um, for specialty type applications, but uh, ha a half to three gallon per acre, um, you know, they're not meant to replace a ground rig. You know, so a ground rig is going to do 10 gallon, 20 gallon to the acre when it comes to herbicide work. Um, it's going to have labels um, that are specific to ground rigs and the drone, a drone is air application. I know. So the same reason you don't have a helicopter or an airplane out there putting on your herbicide for all your acres is the same reason you're not going to use a drone to do that job either. Now, can it? Absolutely. But do I think that's, it's going to be the primary use? No, I don't think so. So they're going to be more similar to crop dusters. So we're talking about fungicide insecticide. You know, when it comes to what our customers, you know, we've got about 400 or so drones out there right now and the majority of them, vast majority of them when it comes to row crop are being deployed for fungicide and insecticide application on corn, on wheat, on soybeans, on you know, other crops uh, across, um, across the, the U.S. So two gallons per acre, that's what we benchmark everything at. But in addition to what crop dusters do, they can do a lot more. You know? So a lot of crop dusters kind of shy away from uh, burn down, especially here in the Midwest. I know that's, that's done in other parts of, of the U.S., but burn down application in the, mid, in the Midwest is not uh, being done too much by crop dusters because we don't have a huge abundance of crop dusters that are ready to, to do it. Um, whereas if you have a drone locally and it stays wet for so long, yeah, you can do wet field burn down, you can do whole field application with, with, uh, with herbicide, and it works great at, at low volumes. Of course, labeling is what you have to look for there uh, for, for chemical labeling. Um, and then, of course, cover crop overseeding. This is something that, you know, crop dusters do. There are some pilots here, even in our area, uh, that do cover crop overseeding and granular work. Um, but there, there's fewer of those pilots than there are of uh, pilots who will do uh, fungicide application uh, because it's just not that abundant of work um, and you have to have, you know, special equipment to do so. You have to be set up right to do so. And so it's hard to get somebody to do cover crop overseeding. Again, a drone is going to provide that. Um, you know, as a, as a tool, very, very easy to do that. I mean, it's just as easy to cover crop seed with a, with a drone as it is to do it with a, with a, um, or do the, the liquid application. And in addition to kind of some of the things that it's hard to get crop dusters to do, um, we're looking at being more versatile with, with a drone. So spot application, obviously a drone can hover and can, you know, has a camera on it. You can do spot application, small field application, you know, areas that crop dusters cannot get into or fields with high degree of top, topographic change. So that, that slope that, you know, I just have a, a huge role to, and these drones follow the, the topography up to 30 degree slopes without any kind of pre, um, you know, 3D flight path. Um, they're just using the radar. So really, really impactful in those areas that really have been underserved by crop dusters. And we think about these areas and, you know, we've had a ton of customers that say, yeah, I'm getting a drone because we're not able to get 
crop dusters in our area because there's too many trees, too many power lines, whatever, and our fields are too small. Um, so these are very, very impactful for these, these areas here. Okay, so really when we kind of recap um, drones for row crop, um, what are we talking about drilled down to one sentence? We're talking about on-demand aerial application, doing your own aerial application, when you want, how you want, where you want. You know, the kind of the point I want to drive home here is when we look at on a farm, you know, what, what do farmers do on the farm? And increasingly more so, more and more successful farmers are doing everything on the farm themselves. You look at over the past, you know, century, you know, century really, farmers have been increasingly doing more and more on the farm themselves. We have, you know, there's, there's large farmers now even buying uh, fertilizer facilities and, you know, doing all their own, even fertilizer buying. So vertical integration starts with doing everything on the farm yourself. Now, what can farmers not do? The one thing, you know, the one application you cannot do on the farm is air application. There's very, very few farmers who have their own plane uh, or helicopter do their own air application. Anybody can own a drone uh, and do that. And we look at custom air application. You know, this is this is where we've actually seen more of our customers. You know, we've got we've got a lot of customers that are that are solely using these drones for custom application. Uh, we have some, you know, customers that are farmers themselves and using it for custom on the side. And you might think, you know, you look at this, this business from the outside looking in, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around, okay, the drones are small compared to a plane, so how do I make money? It's all about scale. You know, you think about a plane, it's going to cost you a million dollars um, to buy, you know, a good plane, um, you know, an air tractor. You have, to, you have to have staff, you know, you're going to have to have a, a good pilot if you're not a pilot yourself. Um, and the pilots are not cheap, typically. Um, and of course is dangerous, you know, so there's a lot of barriers to entry when it comes to crop dusting. Drones reduce the barrier to entry to, you know, to very, very low, almost zero, you know, um, and we help you through the entire process there. And then you're looking at low overhead costs. You know, we've, we've had, uh, well, almost everybody, I would, I would think, I mean, based on the numbers we've seen, everybody that has bought a drone this year and has used it the way it's supposed to be used in custom application has more than paid for their investment. And then when we look at, uh, you know, that's, that's because we're talking about low cost. You know, we're under a dollar an acre as far as operation costs typically, um, you know, especially with the T40, uh, it's going to be under a dollar an acre for sure um, because of scale again, just getting better and better. Equipment costs, you know, you know, we, I mean, you might spend, you know, up to, if you're looking at buying a truck and trailer, maybe a hundred grand on a, on a full you know, drone setup with everything, including truck and trailer. That's a low cost uh, to start an actual business. And efficiency wise, you know, we can get efficiencies on, on the T30 of 35 acres an hour with a, with a perfect field. And we look at the T40, we're estimating probably 40 acres an hour, possibly more. We'll kind of see where the data shakes out once we do more testing. Um, so you can do, do the numbers here and do the math and kind of see uh, where this would work as a, as a business as well. So now let's take a little time and look at some other aspects of drones, and that's in research is, is the first one here. So I don't know if you're familiar with how, um, you know, products are tested on a, on a research side when it comes to, you know, like testing products in tall crop. Um, and that's a lot of times that is a intern with a Tyvek suit and a backpack sprayer walking through and waving it over their head. And so what drones are going to provide here is going to be a lot more accuracy. Um, because, of course, they're, they're GPS controlled. Um, you can get RTK to control them even, even uh, more tighter. They have flow meters to control the rate. Um, so and you can plan out your, your route. So it's only, only the route that you want done is being done. And so much more accuracy when it comes to certain types of tests like this. And then just a lot more can be done, you know, a lot more. Um, you know, you talk, talk about going from spraying uh, with a Tyvek suit and a backpack sprayer to a drone, I mean, you're talking about a hundred fold increase uh, in, in efficiency. And of course, reduce crop damage in those very, very small plots um, where you have maybe a, a 10 by 20 plot um, replicated across the field. You, you need to, you can't really damage any, any plants or else it throws off uh, the results pretty, pretty drastically. And of course, with that on the research side and even on, you know, on the farm side as, as well, these drones do provide application maps. Uh, here's one right here. Um, and you can, you can do more with these. This is just a general example of an application map showing the acreage that was applied, um, the amount per acre that was, that was applied, or the amount total volume that was, that was applied. Um, so 
lot, a lot you can do with this that aren't traditionally available with other types of aerial application or again, backpack sprayers. Now pasture and forage production. So and I'll give you kind of an example. If you guys aren't familiar with, with pasture, um, you know, on the farm growing up, you know, I, I came from a dairy farm and, a, and a, we raised beef cattle as well, and, as well as row crop. And the reason that we did not plant our pastures to corn was because there's too many ditches, there's too many trees, uh, there were too many rocks. So the same reasons we didn't want to plant that field and till that field are the same reasons that not a lot of custom applicators, when it comes to ground applicators, you know, want to actually apply those fields. Typically pastures, if you're in an area where there's kind of a mix between pasture and, and row crop, usually pastures are the last to get done in terms of custom application. And I'm sure, you know, if you're a farmer yourself or rancher yourself, you might not like doing those fields either, especially if you grew up in an area like me where that's what you were facing. Um, so drones don't have any of these uh, challenges. You know, all of these, the ditch, ditches, saplings, fence posts, rocks, I mean, those are, those are problems for tires. Drones don't have tires or wheels. So we're talking about really reducing the costs, uh, reducing the application cost quite a bit uh, when it comes to pasture um, and, and forage work, or at least, you know, application work. And then we're looking at, when we're looking at herbicide on, on pasture and forage, um, and I'm going to just go ahead and throw uh, golf courses and turf farms in here. Group four herbicides are what are commonly used, growth regulators, and they work extremely well with ultra low volume applications. So what a drone does essentially. Um, and then we we'll look at, you know, other things you might, might be managing on, on, a, on a pasture, it could be brush control. And this is, can be expensive to get a, a helicopter to come in there, an airplane to come in there. Um, so a drone could do that same job. Um, just like they can. And then we look at the granular spreader. I think it's got just as much application on the, on the forage side, pasture side, as it does on the row crop side, um, possibly even more when we look at interseeding clover uh, or pasture fertilizer applications, since pastures don't tend to actually require as much fertilizer as uh, row crops do, it, the volume might make sense with a drone uh, with a lot less cost uh, in application per acre. So I'm sure most of you probably came for the row crop and maybe even the pasture side, um, but I want to show you kind of some special use applications that, you know, are potentially going to be a huge impact when it comes to utilizing sprayer drones there. So you saw there orchards, we're doing a lot of testing on orchards, you know, along with here's an orchard on a, on a uh, mountain slope and we're doing testing there as well. Um, and forestry is another part of this. So drones, you know, they don't just need, uh, or they don't, they, you don't have to just do flat surfaces or rolling fields. You can do anything. I mean, you can fly laterally, you can create 3D topography maps. Um, so you can do a whole slew of things that are really, really interesting with, with these drones. Uh, vineyard application could potentially be a, a good use. You know, here in the US, there's a lot of blowers that are used in vineyards and orchards, but this is just a blower essentially from the sky. So we are currently in testing on both of these applications. We've done this, this is not our video, but we have done this with, uh, with the T30. Uh, painting a greenhouse. Really cool application, could be a, a, a large market, honestly, for, for certain areas. And we're in, in testing with a bunch of other things, you know, wetland management, we've done a lot of that. Um, and, you know, just a slew of other, of other projects that we're working on. So we'll bring more data as that comes. So now how do you, you know, you're, we're, we know how, what a spray drone is good for, how do you operate it? You know, this is really simple. I won't, I won't dive too far into this because, again, we do have um, these videos on our YouTube page. If you, uh, there should be a link here in the description somewhere on this, on this video, they'll take you to kind of our full demo video or our, your YouTube page has a, a bunch of different demo videos on there. So watch those if you want to kind of get a good idea of how these drones work uh, as, a, as a concept or a, in, in the field, how you do mapping, that kind of stuff. We don't post all of our videos on there because we have to save some pack for our customers exclusively in terms of some training aspects and, and that kind of th stuff. But uh, videos on there are, are some good marketing videos that show you how to, how to run a sprayer drone. So essentially the way it works, uh, you, you know, you come to the field with everything you need, um, or you go ahead and map your boundary, uh, ahead of time, but do one of those two things. So map your boundary ahead of time. You can do it in the office, get everything you need on a, on a trailer ready to go. Um, you know, go to the field and then you just input your parameters, your flight height, speed, direction, application rate, all of that stuff. Very, very simple, uh, on, on the remote. Then press takeoff, and it's just a slide bar right across. Drone takes off, 
goes to its start point, start spraying, um, whenever it's done spraying or whenever it uh, comes to kind of like that most efficient refill point, then it's going to return to home. That's what RTH stands for, return to home automatically if you want it to. And again, it's customizable. And then land it, refill the tank, replace the battery, send the drone back out there, picks up where it left off, and then just put the, that battery on the charger. You have a generator on site and the generator and charger combo will charge batteries fast enough so you can operate continually. At least for most op um, operations, most applications, um, you can operate continually all day long um, without having to wait for batteries um, with the right charger and battery combo. So multiple units can swarm, you know, it's not technically swarming, um, but it's covering, you know, separate sections of a, of a large area. Um, there's some regulation behind this, um, but you know, the technology is there where it can do this. You can fly the drone manually. So the great thing about these drones, the Agris drones, DJI drones is manual and, um, and remote or automated control are on the same same device, the same remote. So you, you do automated control by pushing the screen on the, on the, on the remote, and you manual control on the same remote using the sticks. And so they are completely autonomous when you want them to be, and they are completely manual when you need them to be. Really cool feature. Obstacle avoidance radars, of course, are incorporated to every drone that we have. Terrain following up to 30 degree slopes or even higher if you do pre-mapping, um, you know, terrain mapping. Um, and then, of course, there are FPV cameras um, on the drone. So first person view, you can see what the drone sees. So what drones do we offer? Um, currently right now, we have three models available. The Agris T10, so 10 stands for 10 liters, uh, about two and a half gallons, great for test plots or spot applications, really easy to transport. This is the only model that we have that does not require a 44807 exemption to fly it. So you can legally fly it without a 44807 exemption. So you can get approved for this one a little bit quicker, but not, not a lot, honestly. The T30, this has been a huge success over the, uh, the past year, over 2022. Um, we've had a lot of these uh, out in the field being operated. Um, so yes, you can cover large acreage. You can do spot, spot application with them as well. Uh, and then of course, cover crop overseeding with the large cover crop tank uh, is being utilized actually right now while we speak. Um, you know, we're talking right now in, in the fall, being utilized right now. So what everybody's been waiting for is the T40. Uh, the DJI kind of released some stuff on the T40 beginning of 2022, kind of some marketing videos. And so everybody's been wondering, when's it going to come? When's it going to come? Well, it's here. The T40 is here and we're extremely excited about it. And so, the, I mean, what does the T40 bring? Essentially bigger, better. Um, you know, more software, more hardware, uh, all around just an incredible platform. So let's talk about the T40. Let's dive into a really detailed discussion of the, the Agris T40, how it compares to the T30 and availability. We'll talk about every aspect that we know up to this point on the T40. So some quick stats on the Agris T40. Uh, it has a little bit bigger tank than the T30, 10 and a half gallon, still has radar, um, a little bit better radar, obviously. Uh, just in general here, everything is a bit better than, than the T30, a bit more improved. We're talking about the waterproofing system. You can use a power washer. The camera is more improved on a gimbal with better resolution, better remote, and a different, and we're not going to say better at this point necessarily, um, but potentially better and a, a rotary nozzle style system. So let's look at each system separately on the T30, and we're going to compare it with the T40. Um, we'll look at the spraying system first, and this one's fairly obvious when it comes to tank size. 30 for 30 liters, 40 for 40 liters, uh, and in gallons it is 7.9 on the T30 and 10.5 on the T40. But every other part of this system is a bit different. When we look at the nozzles, there are 16 on the T30 and there are 2 on the T40. But that's the only similarity is, you know, a number. The rest of it is completely different. Uh, when we look at the T30 we, and every other drone, we use uh, pressure to basically pump a liquid through a T-jet style nozzle and that atomizes the liquid uh, to where we get a spray, our spray pattern that way. We, we pressurize through a small orifice um, and, a, and a nozzle type to get our spray pattern and our droplet sizes. The T40 gets spray pattern and droplet size through a rotary style nozzle. So these nozzles actually rotate around 
if you've seen our other videos, you've watched those uh, already, then you kind of have seen this firsthand. But the nozzles rotate around and essentially the liquid comes into that, that nozzle unpressurized. And as it goes to the outside through centrifugal force of that nozzle, it's cut up. Um, every, every droplet is cut up into the same size. So what these nozzles will provide, and what we've seen already, has been a more uniform uh, consistency of droplet size. Um, you don't have to change nozzles to change droplet size. It's just touch a button, it changes. Uh, should cause less clogging issues because, again, the orifice is much larger that everything's flowing through. And we see less drift. Uh, since every droplet's the same, there's no fines or much fewer fines, less drift. So this is a big change right here. It cannot be understated. And I think it's going to be actually a big improvement. All right, so level meter is, uh, is different as well. There's no float. Uh, there's a float on the T30, no float on the T40. But it still does live level sensing through a scale system. There's scales actually on the drone itself. Um, and then this is uh, accompanied by a low level actually float or sensor at the bottom. So still does live level sensing. And the, the scale on the T40 actually works with the electromagnetic flow meter. So same flow meters on the T30 as on the T40, but it works with the scale to make sure that your discharge is more accurate. So it should have a more accurate rate, honestly. Um, and just like the 30, there is no swapping or hot swapping of the liquid tank. And that's makes sense. It's 10 and a half gallons. Um, pumps are a bit different too. There are still two pumps, but they are unpressurized. It's a rotary style uh, pump. Move on to the spreader system here. So again, big differences here. And it, you know, I guess big difference really is the size. You know, everything else on the spreader system is pretty similar. Uh, so big difference here is going to be the size. We're looking at 10 and a half gallon on the T30, 18 and a half gallon on the T40. It's almost double the size. Uh, you know, so the, the T40 has a 40, uh, or excuse me, the T30 has a 40 liter capacity granular tank. The T40, it's actually a 70 liter capacity granular tank. And so it equates to, we have verified that uh, the T40 will hold 100 and actually 15 pounds of rye is what we were able to get into that zero rye. Uh, or well, maybe that was that was uh, it was either rye or radishes. One of those got one fifteen. One of those got one hundred and ten. So that is accurate. Is what that is mainly. Uh, so yes, sc still a scale system. The scale is not on the tank; is on the drone actually. Um, so uses the same scale for both liquid tank and the dry tank. Uh, it incorporates a dump port. Uh, useful feature if you put the wrong stuff in there. The discharge location is different. So. If you've seen the video, you kind of might understand what I'm talking about. And if you have a T30, you know that it discharges above the radar um, and over landing gear. So you have to put that deflection shield um, on, the, on the spreader tank before you start spreading. Otherwise, you're going to get you know, seed or whatever up into the props and can chip your props. Whereas a T40 discharges much you know, further below the props. And so you don't need a deflection uh, a plate uh, installed after that. It makes install actually quite a bit easier. Let's look at uh, some radar and some flight characteristics between these two drones. Uh, both do have an omnidirectional radar. It's similar, but a bit different on the T40. It's supposed to be better. You know, we don't have a lot of information about that just yet, but it is supposed to be um, you know, better as far as what detail it can, it can see. Uh, the but everything else about the radar system is quite a bit different between these two drones. So when we look at the location, radar is under the frame on the T40, or T30, excuse me and it's on the front of the drone at the nose on the T40. This is going to provide quite a bit better field of view. You know, you look at where the radar is at, you can just picture yourself sitting right there where the radar is at on the T30 and looking out, what are you going to see? You're going to see a lot of landing gear. You're going to see a lot of boom sticking down. Whereas you picture yourself sitting where the T40's radar is at, wide open. You know, the front of that is wide open. So everything out the front and off to the sides, it should have a really good field of view. Um, now, this also means that the drone always flies forward, you know, since the radar is located on the, on the front, the main radar, I should say, it does have radar on the back, on the bottom, on the top, but the main radar is on the front, and so it always flies forward. So it goes into the field, turns around, comes back, whereas a T-30 goes into the field, slides over, comes back. Okay, and it's also accompanied by uh, binocular vision. Uh, you don't have to know what that is, but you just have to know that DJI has been using binocular vision on 
a lot of their other drones, Mavics, Phantoms, for obstacle avoidance for a long time. So now they're actually incorporating that into their sprayer drones. And it's, it's an incredible system. Uh, max spraying speed. This is a huge improvement on the T40. Um, so T30, 23 feet per second, max spraying speed. Uh, it's about 15 miles an hour. T40, it's actually, you can get up to 32.8 feet per second. Now you have to understand the radar doesn't work as well at that high speed, so really want to keep that to more so flat fields. Um, again, more to come on that once we get to be able to, to test these things actually in the field uh, in more detail. Um, but yes, uh, faster spraying speed. And I should note, I forgot to mention it on the swath width. Again, we don't know much about the swath width on, on the T40 yet, um, but you know, speed and height determine swath width really and the nozzle type and everything. We think it's going to be somewhere around 32 feet. Now let's look at the battery and the charging uh, systems on the T30 and T40. More to you know, come on this in the next slide, but you know, simply put, the battery is very similar uh, in size or capacity, I should say. Um, not much, only a thousand more milliamp. The footprint is actually the same and the plug is actually the same on both batteries. So you can use a T40 battery in a T30. We don't know if we're going to recommend this right now just because of the weight. Uh, it's a bit heavier, not that much heavier, but you know, every bit counts. Um, so more to come on that. Uh, but it incorporates cooling fins. This is a really cool feature. We have tested this out actually, how fast you can cool these batteries down. We had a battery at 30%, put it in basically a, a heater or in front of a heater, you know, a hot room uh, essentially for a while. Got it up to 135 degrees, a T40 battery, 135 degrees. Put it on the battery cooler station, you know, plugged it on there, fans blowing through it and charged it with a T30 charger. And it, by the time it was fully charged, it was down to about 90 degrees, um, I believe is what Alex said. So that's a really cool feature, those cooling fins. And as far as generators go, how you charge these things, um, you know, with the T30, we're recommending 9,500 running watts. So the T30 charger is actually going to be able to charge T40 batteries as well. But so you can use a 9500 running watt generator, but we're going to recommend 12,000 because of the whole cooling fins and the, and the battery cooler. If you want to run those fans, you probably want a bigger generator. That's you know, our recommendation as well. And there is going to be a generator and charger combo. And it actually it says that it's not available for the T30, but you actually can charge T30 batteries uh, with it. So camera and, and the remote control, again, big changes here. Uh, some of the biggest changes um, that, that we've seen as far as, you know, things that people have asked for is the FPV camera. You know, a lot of things that, that you know, questions we get asked is, you know, can you map with this drone? Can you crop scout with this drone? And we had to say, well, not really, no, because the camera is not good enough on the T30 or the T20 or the T10. But the T40, the camera is just as good as a lot of other DJI drones. The resolution is crystal clear. Um, we're talking a 12 megapixel camera. So that's like Mavic Mini, um, which we, we shoot a lot of our videos uh, with a Mavic Mini, 12 megapixel camera, but the T40X has 12 megapixels and a larger sensor. So you can do really good mapping with it. Um, the mapping is, um, you know, if you're familiar with Terra, if you use Terra with your 20 or 30, the mapping is different than that. Uh, same concept, uh, but it's a bit different. Um, you essentially, you know, it, the drone flies at you know, 90 feet uh, over an area and it can do up to 33 acres at a time if you're doing a whole area and maps the area, stitches the imagery together live on the remote, which is really cool. Um, but then you can't actually, you know, attribute certain, you know, things, att attributes on the field. So you can't say this is a tree, this is not a tree, this is a field, this is not a field. Um, but it does update the Google background imagery on the remote with actual imagery from the drone. So that is really cool. Let's say if you pushed out a tree um, or filled in a pond or done some work on a field and Google Maps background imagery does not show that. It's you know, two or three years old. T40 can fly over just that area, just that one area. And then it updates just that one area on the map with that updated imagery. So that's pretty cool. And then you can also do a perimeter mapping mission where it actually flies around the edge of the field and just the edge of the field. You can do a really big field um, like this. I don't know how big exactly, but quite a, quite a you know, large field where it just flies around the perimeter of the, of the field, take pictures on the perimeter, and it essentially gives you a really accurate uh, boundary map on the satellite view to where you can do, you, know, you can see where your trees are at, where your field's at. 
Uh, there, there is some 3D mapping on there. Don't know a whole lot about that yet. Um, we think Terra is still gonna be the best choice if you're gonna be doing 3D mapping though, um, from what we do know. Uh, and it is located on a gimbal. So as far as crop scouting with it, I would still recommend getting a smaller drone, easier to transport, lot, costs a lot less. But you can, if the camera is good enough, yeah, sure, you can do crop scouting with the, with the T40 uh, or just visual imagery with, with the T40. Screen is bigger on the remote, seven inches. Um, remote's quite a bit different and I think a huge improvement. One of those improvements is the detachable antennas. We've had, I don't know how many uh, antennas get busted. You know, you're operating out in the field for 10 plus hours a day, it, you're bound to drop the remote, um, you know, once or twice or kick it off the table or something like that. And if the antennas are up on the T30 remote, then they can get kind of busted off or twisted off, uh, or you can lose the, lose the sleeves on them. Uh, so the T40's detachable antenna is good for that and good if you want to do a range extender uh, for, uh, for reception. Let's take a bit of a closer look at the charging systems on the T40 because this is kind of where there are, uh, there's gonna be options. You know, the T30, it was basically, here's the package, here's what you need, this is, this is it, you know, this is it. But the T40, one of the options is chargers. So there's really three options, in my opinion, just two for most everybody. Uh, the T30 charger is probably gonna be the most prevalent option of people we've talked to. This is the option that they're picking. T30 charger, same as a, as a, you know, as a T30, literally the same charger, um, but you can charge a T40 batteries with it. Um, so with this, it's not made for the T40. That means it doesn't, it doesn't work with the standalone anyways. It doesn't standalone work with the T40 battery cooling station. Um, but we have a kit, our battery cooling kit is how you utilize a T30 charger and a T40 battery cooling station, which is a really good resource the battery cooling station is. Uh, it will charge, a T30 charger we believe will charge fast enough for most operations, uh, but the T40 generator, that's where it comes in at. T40 generator is actually a standalone unit where it's a, a generator and a charger built into one unit. Um, so you don't have to buy a generator and a charger, you just buy that T30 generator, T, excuse me, T40 generator, the DJI 12000i, and you have everything you need there. It also includes, so I know everybody, you know, you run not just your, your generator but in, in your battery charger, but maybe run your, your remote battery charger, maybe run a pump off of that. So it does have 1,500 additional watts um, to utilize something else on there, 110, I believe is what the outlet is. And it is compatible directly out of the box with the battery cooler and it charges uh, very fast. DJI says you only need two batteries uh, if you utilize this generator. Uh, we don't quite buy to that yet. We still recommend three, um, but that's, that's what they say anyways. And then there is the T40 charger. This I don't think is a great option for most people because it requires 380 uh, volt three phase. And here in the US, we have 480 volt three phase. So you buy a generator, a three phase generator here in the US, then it's four, 480 three phase. You have to actually custom make or get somebody to custom make a generator for you that is 380 volt three phase. Um, but this is the same power supply, the same charger essentially that comes in the T40 generator. Um, and the, at the price point that that generator is gonna be, I think it makes more sense just to get it instead of getting the charger plus buying a custom built three phase generator. My opinion. Now let's talk a bit, that was all the specs and all the, all the cool stuff. So let's talk about the FAA stuff uh, on, the, on the T40 because again, this is a drone and rules still apply. So where is the F FAA at now on the T40? Well, currently the T40 is still waiting as of today. Uh, the FAA is still waiting on, uh, or the T40, excuse me, is still waiting on FAA and DOT approval. This is approval out in Washington, uh, Washington, DC. And they basically are reviewing all the documents uh, that, what, that the T40 has, you know, safety, you know, all that kind of stuff with it. And they're making their call on whether or not it can be approved in the US or not. So. It will be approved in the U.S. We know that um, because the FAA is working on it right now. Um, we just don't know when exactly. We're optimistic by the end of the year, but we really can't say when. So once this is approved, then you still need to get a 44807 exemption to legally operate uh, the, the T40 here in the U.S. That's your heavy drone exemption. So even if you already have this for the T30 or the T20, you still need to get a 44807, a heavyweight drone exemption for the T40. 
Now you don't have to go through the entire process because your 137 still applies with the T40. Uh, your 107 still applies with, with the T40. Your class two medical still applies with the T40. Um, you just have to register your T40, which is like you do with every drone and you have to get a 44807. So it should be a bit quicker of a process if you're adding this to your current uh, 137 exemption. And our regulation consultant can do that for you. So what, if you want a T40, what are you gonna get? What does a package include? So the, the T40 in the box, if you've watched the unboxing video, you've seen this, it comes with the drone uh, spray tank, um, remote control. It also comes with a uh, inside that box, the drone box, a battery cooling station that you assemble. You're going to also need a battery charging station. So what, like we talked about, either a generator or the T30 charger. You're going to need three batteries is what we're recommending. Three batteries with the, with the T40. Spreader tank, of course, optional. Uh, if you want to spread anything, I think it's going to be a huge asset on the T40, how, just the pure size of it. Uh, the battery cooling kit, again, that is optional. Um, we like it. You know, if you're going to be using the, the T30 charger, the battery cooling kit is going to give you all of the benefits of being able to just plug in a battery uh, really quickly without having to, you know, fiddle around and, and get that, that charger cord plugged into the battery, you just simply drop it right in to the battery cooling station, which actually charges it, cools it all at the same time. So if you're getting a T30 charger, you have to get that cooling kit if you want to utilize uh, the cooling stations. Uh, of course, our um, extended warranty coverage um, or extended coverage plan. Uh, and if you want to know more about this, we have videos on this as well. Uh, then the T40 field ops kit, but different than the T30 field ops kit, um, the T40 40 does not come with an external battery uh, or external battery charger or frankly just a battery charger that works well uh, for the internal battery um, on, the, on the remote. Um, so this is all included in the field ops kit along with other stuff as well. And then of course our training uh, and our regulations consulting package just like with the T30. And as far as our training goes, if, if you're on this, you're, you might be one of our customers right now. Um, you might say, I don't really think I need training. We're actually giving free training to all of our existing customers uh, for the T40 because we really want you guys um, to, to come because the, the 30 is different. If you came to training with the 30 um, and then you try to operate the 40, you're probably going to be able to do it, but there's going to be a big learning curve on a few things. We'd really like you to come to our training. So what do you do if you want to get a sprayer drone for yourself, a T40 for yourself? Well, first off, you're going to need to get a quote from us. Uh, you're going to figure out, you know, what you're going to need. I would say, honestly, before this, you know, you need to understand the market first. You need to understand, you know, what you're going to be doing uh, with this drone. If you're new to this space, there's a, there's a huge uphill climb when it comes to information. Now, we're here for you. You know, we have, you can watch our videos on YouTube. You can call us. We'll walk you through kind of any questions you might have. Take kind of where to start, you know, because my, in my mind, if you're going to get a sprayer drone, you need to know what you're going to use it for. Um, you know, all through the process there and we can help you with that so after that part's done of course get a quote from us um, we'll set you up with the with the package quote uh, you can get you can uh, ask for a quote through our website agarspraydrones.com and uh, we'll send that over to you along with a lot of other information about that particular model or those models that you're interested in and then of course we uh, customize your package to where it's right for you we'll get you an invoice uh, and then you just have to do a down payment to lock in your drone. We are expecting high demand, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we, we had more demand than what we kind of thought this past year. And so we are planning for high demand, but that might outpace uh, what, what we're able to keep up with. Um, and so securing your equipment um, is kind of the number one goal right now. And we are air shipping all of our drones into us. Uh, so we don't foresee this to be a problem, but go ahead and put a down payment down and uh, then the rest of it uh, whenever we ship your drone to you. After that, after you get your drone, and possibly even before, before you get your drone, we're going to start working with you on the regulations piece. You know, so we're going to set you up with our regulation consultant, and she is going to work through the FAA regulations uh, puzzle, if you will, for you, and get a lot of that done for you. You do have to do um, part of the regulations uh, work yourself, so like your 107 stuff, registering your drone, getting your medical, and uh, talking to your FISDO and getting the final things approved on the 137. 
And then of course, come and attend our comprehensive training. Um, you can do this before or after you get your drone, um, but it's usually good to do it after that. We kind of have a little bit of hands-on experience before that uh, because our training is not designed to make you a good pilot. You know, that comes with practice. You have to practice to do that. Our training is designed to open your eyes, open your mind, and really get you in the mindset as far as the concepts um, and the way of thinking when it comes to being a drone pilot. Our years of experience boil down to in a, in a day's worth of training. And then after you get home, practice, start flying. That's really about it. If you want more information, again, you can request a quote and we will send you more information uh, via that. Um, you can also go to our YouTube page. We are at AgriSpray Drones on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. A lot of good videos on there. And they are, you know, really designed for, you know, kind of uh, marketing purposes, not necessarily instructional purposes. We provide much more videos to our customers um, and, and documentation, a lot of good resources to our customers. We have to keep that exclusive to them. So these videos on here are really just to kind of get you started with what uh, a drone does and how it kind of functions. And of course, our website, agrospraydrones.com, our phone number and our email right there. Please reach out to us if you, um, if you have any questions at all. We'd be glad to help. All right. Hey, guys. I uh, hope you all can hear me right now. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us here tonight. Uh, I know it's late, especially for some of you guys who are on the East Coast. Um, so right now we are going to go ahead and take questions and you can drop questions in the chat you can just type those out i'll be able to read those and um, and answer those or if you want there's a raise hand feature on your screen bottom part of the screen uh, you should be able to raise your hand i believe um, so either raise your hand or uh, type a question in the chat and i will uh, answer those as they come in Yeah, Kenneth, looks like uh, you're up here. Might have to unmute yourself. There you go. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is Kenneth. I, I'm just kind of curious about, is there any recommendation or type of, I guess, feed that goes in these drones? I want to make sure that as I reach out to the, the farming community, that they don't necessarily shorten the life of the drone because they put in the wrong, I guess, substance. Okay, uh, we're talking about feed as in actual feed um, or just just uh, just product in, in general, liquid or granular yeah, product? Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. Not product in general, sure. seed. It's not seeding, that's right, yeah. <laughs> seed, okay. Huh. Yeah, so when we look at the granular side, as far as seed goes, um, really, I guess, it kind of depends what you want to do with it. We've we've tested a ton of different types of seed, you know, mainly on the cover crop uh, side. And we're looking at cover crop. We've we've tested. Uh, we've had uh, oats, radishes, turnips, rye, grass, cereal rye, um, hairy vetch. Uh, we've had guys spread soybeans um, mm -hmm. in you know wet fields. Uh, gosh, uh, ton of other things as well. So. You know, nothing necessarily is is bad to put through these drones as far as a, from a granular perspective. Um, the, the spreader tanks are 100% uh, uh, waterproof, so you can wash them out. You use any kind of corrosive material like fertilizer, you can wash all that out. And of course, they're they're made from plastic, stainless steel, um, aluminum, uh, so in carbon fiber. So nothing should really rust either with corrosive product, but um, you know, again, it really it's all comes down to uh, what is needed in your area. Talk to farmers. What do they use currently? What would they want to use? And then do some testing. If you have more specific questions on specific uh, seed that, uh, that you want to spread, just let us know whenever you uh, you get those and we'll help you out. And one more question. Is it true that this drone could fit in the back of an SUV? So the, the, the T-40, um, well, it depends on height, I guess. You've got about, you know, width-wise, when you're, I guess, what's the footprint whenever you fold up a T-40? It's about a little over four feet uh, by a little over two feet, about two and a half feet wide, four feet long, by about three feet high. Um, so, yeah, it should fit in the back of an SUV. Uh, might not be the, 
the the best way to transport, but definitely should fit. I'm just curious. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Okay, we got some questions here on the chat. I'm going to go ahead and take those right now. Um, Kyle asked, is there any timeline or possibility of legitimate swarming through one controller on, on the T30 or T40? So I'm guessing you're asking this on a uh, an FAA um, stance. So is the FAA, have they approved uh, swarming yet on a 30 or 40 or any large drone? No, they have not. They have not approved uh, swarming for any drone over 55 pounds. You can get a swarming exemption for a drone under 55 pounds. Right now, that looks like three drones, uh, basically two operators, one pilot, one visual observer. Um, but for the, the T30, T40, this is not the case. Now, this is coming soon. We know they, they're asking questions. The FAA is asking questions uh, of us, our regulation consultant, to get this through. Um, so they're working on it. We just don't have a timeline on that. Now, technically speaking, uh, one T30 remote can communicate with up to three uh, T30 drones, and you can control up to three T30 drones on one T30 remote, uh, but we don't recommend doing this, uh, A, legal uh, aspect, but B, redundancy. So if you're looking at running multiple uh, units, multiple drones in the same field, use separate remotes because the functionality really is the same in terms of how you segment the field uh, and how you operate these drones. But if you have three drones in the air, you have one remote and that remote dies or you fell falls off the back of the truck and you break it and all three drones in the air, that's a bad, bad deal. Um, so redundancy with each drone having their own separate remote is a great idea. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and finish the chat portion here. All right, Ethan said, great presentation. What are approximate costs for the full package? Uh, so, of course, so for the full package of the T40, I assume you're talking about uh, this ranges depending on what you get, what you're needing, uh, where you're at with regulations, you know, whether or not, you know, you're a customer of ours right now and um, or you're a new customer, you need the full training. So it ranges um, anywhere from around 30,000 to about, uh, if you get the generator up to like 42, 3,000, I think, somewhere around there. Um, so it's best to yeah, just go ahead and uh, give us a quote or an email on this. We'll send you a line item quote and we can work with you on that. Okay, next here, uh, has there been any upgrade on durability to the T40 ESCs from Rotor Impact? Okay, um, so Rotor Impact, um, I assume you mean if a uh, motor, or if, if you crash it, um, that might actually uh, cause an ESC to fail. Um, we've seen that. Well, we don't know. We haven't crashed the T40 yet. <laughs> so I can't really tell you if there's if that's been upgraded now. DJI, you know, we we know there's there has been issues with, with the T30. You know, in comparison from the T20 to the T30, the T20 was a beast in terms of reliability. The T40, we have a lot of reliable units, but we have some units that we know there were issues. Um, and we've worked through that with, with our customers, still working through that with DJI right now, actually. Um, now, DJI does say that there has been improvements on uh, the ESCs. Um, for you guys who don't know what ESC is, ESC, um, electronic servo control, that actually is a part that controls the motor. Um, they said there have been improvements there. So more testing is what we need to do to make sure that that is accurate. Um, but we hope so. And... One more point on that, uh, the, the T30 did have, you know, there was one common issue that a lot of guys saw was like an uh, overheating issue with ESC number three. And if you look at the T30 design, uh, T30 had six um, arms, six motors, and it was actually back heavy. So the back of the drone was heavier than the front of the drone, which means the back of the drone, and especially motor three, had to work harder to keep it flying with a full load. With the T40 being four arms um, and each arm having two motors that kind of rotate, we don't actually see this being a being as nearly as big of an issue, um, and the max thrust is just a lot higher with, with the T40. Okay, Matt here says, uh, along with Kyle's first question, once uh, T40s are approved for flight, is it feasible to operate one up, one up, one down? Is that legal? Um, how does that work? So, um, in the U.S. right now, it is one drone per pilot. Um, now that 
just does mean one drone up in the air. So yeah, as long as you have one, you have two drones, one on the ground, one in the air, then you're only operating one drone. So I don't see that that being a problem, especially if you have two remotes. Um, then I don't see that 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 being a problem at all. So whenever you have two drones up in the air with one pilot, uh, that's that's where the FAA doesn't like that. Um, but again, we do hope that we get uh, swarming exemption approved soon. Okay, uh, see, Steve here said, new to the drone world, very interested and looking into this for business purposes here in Missouri. Great, fellow Missourian. Do you sell smaller camera drones for scouting purposes? Example, uh, Mini 3 Pro. So we do not sell camera drones, a uh, couple of reasons. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. That's, well, that's the biggest reason right there. <laughs> we don't want to compete with Amazon. Uh, so you know, and, and cam camera drones have so many uses and we are focused on ag, ag only. And so whenever we do get into sprayer drones or excuse me, camera drones, which we, we are planning to, you know, our focus will be the software because the drone itself is, is just a tool to collect images. Um, you know, the camera drone is just a tool to collect images. It is a software. That is where the real power lies. Uh, in these in these scouting drones, and there's a lot of software being developed right now, currently under under development. And I at this point in time, I mean, I'm not super excited about um, you know a lot of this software because it's still fairly infant. But um, we'll see that coming. So if you want a uh, Mini Three Pro, uh, then look to Amazon as uh, or wherever else, honestly. Um, and then maybe we'll come back with with some good software to help run that. And if you're looking for a good small camera drone for scouting purposes, if you want a very basic, simple drone um, that works with uh, a lot of the well-known uh, mapping software, then the Mavics, uh, well, specifically the Mavic Pro 2, Mavic 2 Pro, um, not the Zoom, uh, works well. Don't get the smart controller, just get the regular controller. The Mavic Air 2, not the Mavic Air 2S, Mavic Air 2 works with a lot of mapping software and of course the Phantom 4. Um, some of the newer DJI drones do not work with mapping software yet. They will in the future, just not yet. Okay, Brian says, do you, uh, do you need to have both the, the T40 12,000i generator charger and the T30 uh, slash 40 intelligent battery charging station? So you need both the, the, the T30 charger and the generator? No. You don't, um, just one or the other. You know, right now, in my opinion, just get the T30 uh, slash T40, it's the same uh, charger. Um, it was designed for the T30, works with the T40 just fine. Just get that charger. That's that's my opinion right now. Um, unless you don't have a generator at all and you want a complete package with everything, I do think that the 12,000i is a really good option. Um, now, keep in mind that that 12,000i generator really is only for charging these batteries. You can't really do anything else with it. Um, so, but it it works. It, we it's like it's a Honda clone engine. So Honda engines work great. Um, so it's going to be reliable. Um, but more to come on that. We don't actually have have them in stock yet. They come in this week, and um, we'll have a lot more testing on on those in the future. Hope that answers that that question. Okay, um, if you guys have uh, any more questions, yeah, feel free to raise your hand um, or uh, drop them in the chat. Uh, while we're waiting here, uh, availability, um, that's usually a question some people ask on the T40. We do have T40s in stock right now. Um, we have about, uh, I think, uh, 30 or so that are not sold yet uh, that we can ship out immediately. And we'll have more coming uh, next well here in just a couple weeks, actually, I believe. Um, and then more after that. So, uh, yeah, you can get one a T40 right now. Okay. Kyle said T30 batteries do work on the T40. Correct. So do the T30 batteries work on the T40? That's interesting. I have, we haven't actually tested a T30 on a T40 because we never thought there was a really a real reason to test a T30 battery on a T40. Um, it should work. We haven't actually fired one up with a T30 battery. Um, you know, they're, it's slightly lower voltage. 
um, and slightly lower milliamps uh, as well. So I would highly recommend not to use a T30 battery on a T40. Um, you should be able to, we better, now that you asked that question, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a note here. So we just test that for, um, uh, for I guess, for these questions. <laughs> Okay, I made the note. All right, Ethan asked, uh, best way to find clients as a custom applicator. Okay, so this depends what type of custom application you're doing, obviously. And you know we have to boil this down. Let's boil this down very simply. So if you're in the Midwest um, or in a in a row crop area, and you want to use a spare drone for a for a custom business. What are you looking at doing? Primarily, you're looking at doing fungicide. It's going to be your 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 bread and butter. Fungicide on corn uh, is what your your target um, application should be. So, how do you get clients there? Uh, well, the easy way would be just to basically go to a you know a, a local retailer. So here in the here in the Missouri, we have MFA, we have Nutrien. Uh, you know. Towards the east, we have uh, FS locations. Uh, there's a ton of other ag retailers. So I'm talking about re, you know uh, service providers. So locations that you know sell chemicals, sell seed, um, sell fertilizer, and provide applications. Now, these uh, you might think, well, why do I go to them for for clients whenever they already have their own clients already do their own application? Well, the thing is about these uh, locations, these retailers, is they don't actually do any of their own aerial application. They do, they, they contract all of that out because they don't have helicopters themselves. Most of them don't anyways, or, or airplanes themselves. And so they contract all the aerial work out. And so they're always looking for uh, aerial applicators, especially at those uh, in their area. Okay, you're from Ohio, perfect. Um, so go to them and that would be the easiest way to get clients uh, because they'll basically just say, yeah, we'll give you, you know, 5,000 acres worth of work um, and we'll line it up all up for you. You just go do it essentially whenever you need it done. Now, my recommendation is don't do that. My recommendation uh, with a sprayer drone is go directly to the farmer. Um, so basically just start, you know, just pull up onto the farm and sell the service uh, and do this early. Do this, you know, in the, in the, before the spring even or, in the, or early in the summer and tell them what you can do, how much, you know, per day you can do. Um, tell them you want to, you know, if they want a fungicide applied on, on your corn, you're the guy. Um, because this this eliminates a middleman, um, plus it strengthens your relationship with that particular grower. And with sprayer drones, really, as long as you have, I mean, if the T40, 5,000 acres, that, that's that's really all you need per year to make a successful business. Now, you can do more than double that for sure, but you have 5,000 acres a year, you can get that done within five clients uh, or less, um, and then you can secure that business year after year by doing a really good job. We are going to be uh, on that uh, question there. We are going to be doing a another webinar, likely next month sometime, about specifically starting a custom application business um, and what that looks like from from start to finish. So look for that. Okay, is there a shipping charge versus picking up the drone? Uh, no, at this point in time, we ship for free um, uh, all across the U.S. Uh, now, if we get to other countries, then we're going to look at, at that. Um, but all, all across the U.S., yeah, we do LTL shipping for free uh, direct to your door. Um, and then you Donna also ask, should we come in person for the training or can it be done remotely? We are 10 hours away. Okay. We love it when people come in person for the training. And here's why. Because we do classroom style training with groups of up to 50 people. And these are people from all across the U.S. We have people come from, from everywhere, well over 10 hours away. And what this allows is, is, is a lot of collaboration uh, and brainstorming and great questions uh, as well. So things that maybe you're not thinking of yet that you'll think of in the future. Some of our um, uh, customers that come to training have actually been flying their drone already um, and are coming back for, for training. And they're able to give a lot of insight and ask more detailed questions. And so it's really good to be there. Now we will be doing um, a like live Zoom uh, for these uh, these trainings, but it's best to be there in person. 
we're actually going to be also, um, hopefully in the near future, releasing uh, basically step-by-step -step, um, modules for training on your own. That way, when you come to an in-person training, if you choose to, it'll you'll you'll have a lot more information, and we can dive much deeper into a lot of these topics. Okay, Steve asked, do you have a uh, rating baseline for a custom applicator, a rating baseline for custom applicators with a drone rating baseline? So I'm uh, guessing, uh, what do you what do you charge per acre? Okay, so what does a custom applicator with a drone charge per acre? Uh, and again, this really varies a lot depending on where you're at. You might just drop in the comment where you're located at, uh, Steve. So across the Midwest, you know, if we're boiling this down to fungicide application on corn uh, or beans or wheat or whatever, but primarily focus on corn, then what, so who are you competing against? That, that's the big question. Who are you competing against in your area? Central Mo, perfect, okay. Central Missouri. So you're you're competing against helicopters and airplanes that do are doing aerial application of fungicide. And so you might be directly competing with them on the same fields that they might be able to do. And so your rates there are going to have to be similar. Now, a drone, what a drone provides is value over what an what an airplane or helicopter can do because you can get closer to the field edge. You maintain a better altitude across the field, especially a rolling field. You set it for 10 feet high, the radar is going to keep it right at 10 feet uh, you know, across the, across the entire field. And you're only the drone is essentially removing all human error. So what, what aerial applicators will often do is if they get a 100 acre field and uh, they get the map for it, maps is 100 acres, they're going to go in there, they're going to apply 100 acres worth of product. And on the edge of the field, you know, where they have to pull up with the, where the trees and the power lines are at, a lot of that product is not going to make it onto the crop very well um, or at all, sometimes, frankly. But the, the grower, the customer is still going to be charged 100 acres worth of service and 100 acres worth of product, even though you know, maybe only 80 percent or 90 percent of that um, is actually done accurately. And so what you can do with the drone is you can sell the value. You can say all the things I just said, you know, reducing all the human error, plus the drone tells you if it's a hundred acre field that you mapped out 95 because you had to stay away from the trees and stuff, then you charge 95. You charge higher than what the aerial applicators do. So if they're charging 15 bucks, you charge 16, 17, 18. A lot of our guys here in central Missouri are charging $18 an acre. Uh, up to actually 20 um, per acre. And if you're in Troy, uh, not an area common for aerial, aerial application, then you can own that market. And you can you can essentially provide a service that has never been offered in that area. When when it comes to fungicide on corn, farmers, you know, fungicides are getting better and better and better, and the data is getting better. And it's almost a guaranteed ROI if you apply it and apply it right. Um, and so demand is high. Demand is very high for fungicide. And if they have never been able to do it, and now you're offering them a way to do it through your service, absolutely, uh, you can charge. Yeah, 15, 20 bucks an acre in Central Missouri is for a two-gallon rate. Definitely um, is what you can what you can do. Long answer to a short question. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, anything else here, guys? Okay. If you uh, if you if you have any more questions after this, I know you, you're probably going to think of more. That's almost a guarantee. Um, so if you do, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can uh, reach out to us on over the phone. Uh, call our, our main line. Get to one of our our uh, our salespeople or service people. Um, you can email us info at AgriSpray Drones. Uh, reach out to us through our contact form on the website um, and uh, or through Facebook. So we're always here to help. Uh, thanks again, guys. And uh, oh, wait, hang on. Okay, gotcha. Yes, uh, Kyle. Yeah, we'll we'll respond to you uh, uh, privately with that on the 30 batteries with the 40. You got it. All right. Thanks, guys. Chat with you later. We'll see you.